Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the tank review of the T44-100 and the reason why I show you this vehicle is because I had one of the best games ever in a tank match from the way of playing it uh, or at least in the last time and I'm really willing to show it to you but I also could couple it simply with a good tank review and the T44-100 is a tank that also covers a lot of other tanks in their playstyle, in their upgrade way, uh, in their success, in their handling, in a lot of ways. And that is also the reason, um, or that's because of where it sits in the tech tree and overall, yeah, how this tank is. First of all, it sits between the regular T44 with a battle rating of 6.3 at the T54 1947 with a battle rating of 7.3 uh, so it's kind of an intermediate tank because it uh, features the hull and the turret or they're pretty similar to the T44 but also features the or a relatively similar gun handling and ammunition uh, selection but also the internal components of the T54 47 so uh, also I think this is one of the most brutal tanks to play because it's it's really not just a pure medium it really can brawl and knife fight as you will see in the gameplay later on now uh, let's take a look at the tank arcade uh, stats uh, we have a uh, they're not too much different it's just about the engine power by the way uh, we have a 100 millimeter d10 t cannon with 36 shells overall uh, with a reload rate of 11.2 seconds for my crew and additional to that we have a high caliber machine gun a 12.7 meter dish machine gun uh, on top for anti-aircraft purposes but also a coaxial 7.62 millimeter DT machine gun with a lot of ammunition uh, now overall this tank is very good there is one big downgrade and that's the that's the vertical guidance which is just minus three degree minus three degrees of gun depression comes to the worst gun depressions within the game so you have to try to keep on flat terrain or use some of the tricks I featured in my tank uh, in my guide for how to get more gun depression out of your tank or out of the situation the hull armor is what really makes this tank uh, really nice to play uh, it is 90 millimeters thick but sl um, sloped backwards at 62 degrees um, giving an effective thickness of around 180 millimeters or even one uh, um, 190 millimeters depending uh, on the exact angle the low plate is kind of a weak spot as it is also 90 millimeters thick but just sloped backwards at 45 degrees resulting in around about 130 to 140 millimeters of effective thickness the turret is one of the most trollish turrets in the game and there are four reasons for that first of all the thickness here is 120 millimeters as you see it on the stat card on the middle part here it's just 110 millimeters now why is this turret trollish well there is one comp component from the tiger uh, from the henschel tiger and that is the schmaltrum variant uh, or the schmaltrum aspect so that uh, kind of the side armor uh, counts as also as frontal armor just for a very high angle and the, you can see if you hit here you automatically bounce or the shell disappears then we see this part between uh, um, yeah, the gun mantle armor so to speak and the turret armor and if you hit there shells just disappear I'm not sure how this works but this is how it works um, and then we also have this gun mantle here with additional 50 millimeters but there are angles and um, yeah locations where shells just disappear and also we have this rounding like on the tiger 2p uh, that results in a lot of um, bounces and reflections 
but there is one downgrade and that is a, a shot trap so a shell might hit here and might get reflected uh, downwards and also it's highly likely because this uh, upper armor here is just 15 millimeters thick so high caliber HE shells and aircraft uh, with cannons or in under very steep angles even 50 cals might penetrate you now what about the side well first of all the turret is just 100 millimeters thick um, and it's a big flat area so from the side you're dead the hull is 75 millimeters thick and we have this schützen here so this additional spaced armor which theoretically helps against heat shells however i have not seen uh or i have never seen them work like that um, together with uh, the structural uh, steel of chassis and also the tracks we're looking around about something between uh, 80 to 100 millimeters of thickness and effectively that means that you can angle this tank like a king tiger sounds crazy but it works uh, together with uh, you know uh, wiggling forwards and backwards and uh, changing your angles you bounce a lot of shells and it's a nightmare to properly kill you for enemies if you do these tactics especially in close quarters um, the rear is nothing special 45 millimeters and 75 millimeters so um, then uh, as I said before this tank is kind of similar to the T50 uh, T54 uh, in its internal components. First of all, the crew arrangement is the same with the driver, the gunner and the commander sitting in one line uh, together with the loader. Also we have a fuel tank here and the uh, prominent ammunition rack here which is gigantic. This is kind of similar to the T-54s and also to the Leopard. Uh, also we have uh, ammunition racks here, here and here take out the 16 shots if you really want to make the most out of your survivability uh, when uh, you receive a turret hit uh, it might save you together with the uh, module uh, the crew replenishment you can get back into battle crippled but still alive um, yeah so but this upper plate reflects any kind of APHE shells or uh, solid shots except for APDS and also heat might go through there or is kind of likely to go through there now there is this little weak spot as well but I would not count on hitting that <laughs> it's it's ridiculously small um, yeah so then let's talk just a uh, shot about the mobility and um, in a nutshell this tank is very mobile we have nearly a thousand horsepower in our arcade for 33 and a half tons. Those are stats better than a lot of light tanks. And the top speed of 67 kilometers an hour really lets you see the point for the brake system being important. As well, let's go for the uh, tank realistic battles. And we just half the horsepower, so we have around about. 15 to 16 horsepower per tons, but that's still good for realistic purposes. Now, also we have a top speed of 60 kilometers an hour, um, so this is likewise. So, what about the modules themselves? Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the parts, then the BR412B fire prevention system, the, and then this shell, which you should exclusively use. Uh, because it's just simply the best performing shell uh, the adjustment of fire of course and then uh, crew replenishment elevation mechanism and then go for all the uh, all the mobility upgrades so engine first because it gives you again twice as many horsepower than the transmission for the same research points then you should go to the tracks um, as it prevents you from getting detracked uh, that often I guess uh, then also suspension and brake systems are not that unimportant because once you upgrade uh, have those two unlocked you really have you're really fast and especially in city knife fights you need your braking system because your top speed of 67 uh, kilometers an hour uh, you need to break down and also the suspension uh, you can fire on the move with this gun 
much better than for example on the SG100 um, artillery support and um, the APCR are two modules which are not that important so um, what about the true skills well for the driver tank driving is really important vitality not that important due to the position where it sits and uh, yeah field repair then the gunner obviously range finding and targeting and also agility and vitality because when you might get penetrated then uh, the enemy might take out the gunner in 95% of the cases so agility and vitality to at least uh, secure uh, deaths from shrapnels field repair is optional the tank commander of course leadership uh, very important skill and again uh, vitality and agility likewise for the loader weapon reloading is the most important skill I think uh, overall uh, vitality is not that unimportant and again agility as well um, the radio operator you don't have in this tank um, I don't know how it interacts with I guess the commander which takes on this job as well but um, if you have points around uh, lying around unused uh, to get up for this uh, crew level to be able to get this expert crew which I also recommend you might do as well do it so um, then what about the gun well again let's have a look at the crew and let's have a look at what we're uh, talking about the gun has a base reload of nearly 14 seconds uh, with me having you know the, the leadership skill and the tank loader maxed out for the expert crew as well uh, I have 11.13 seconds that's really good and for uh, also the ace crew or gold crew however you want to call it uh, 10.5 seconds straight out so um, this 100 millimeter D10T is supposed to fire a shell uh, the last upgraded APHE shell that's really similar to the long 88 but as we will see in the gameplay the long 88 mics, uh, lacks the punch and that's quite surprising uh, as you know when you look at the explosive filler we have 103.7 grams of TNT equivalent that's less then you will find on the uh, German, uh, where is it? On the German Panzergranate 39.43, which has 108.8 grams. But the damaging effect is much bigger and much more widespread. Um, so the TNT equivalent is not everything, it's also the package around it. So, how many? shrapnels you create how big they are and how far they reach within the tank so don't forget about that and um, I can say this this gun is just really good um, I prefer it over a lot of guns now the bomb 88 has a better reload and does have the best performing shell from the, from the first battle onwards uh, the APCR is likewise u uh, unusable as on this tank so yeah I think that's enough theory crafting let's hop in some gameplay shall we and what a gameplay it is so here we are on the map advanced to the Rhine and it's a city uh, yeah knife fight that we can expect and in fact we will get it um, now I am top tier it seems or I think uh, the highest I see is a 7.3 I guess of course I killed that guy but the thing is just look at the mobility of this tank now here we have a little bit of problem it seems like that the top speed is possible but you're always you know running around like with 50 kilometers an hour and everything above takes a while now then I anticipate uh, the enemies coming around that corner in a bit so I'm driving just in my gun view um, and because it's a night battle I obviously uh, turned on the crosshair light 
which just does not which not just looks cool but really helps you aiming in the night even in an arcade now um, I ignored the cap sound and waited for people to come around that corner and um, wait 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 and yeah so all city maps really provide good opportunities for those Russian tanks um, the enemy has to waste precious seconds to overcome their suspension wiggling while you stand still after like one second or are very likely to hit uh, the enemy um, on the move as well so I see my first target it's a panther one shell right through the turret and um, killing the gunner the loader and the commander here the, um, the hit cam was not too good and I killed this T3485 I should have waited for the tiger too but doesn't matter I got a kill assist on the panther A that's good enough the T44100 missed and then ignores me big mistake as I put one through his side of the turret and then I turn around because I see it on the radar and I thought it's a tiger P and in fact it's a tiger H one right into the turret and then I just charge him I charge him and want to get onto the side of him um, but he turns his turret and then I dunk it in, into his gun mantle that was due to the bad gun depression and I was lucky that he didn't shoot there I don't know maybe I really crippled his reload and then yeah the inevitable um, that was kind of a waste of shells that I needed three instead of two so not the very best gameplay by me um, as you know arcade is so easy yeah and look at the mobility this was the position I had like uh, half a minute ago T29 on the move lower plate thank you very much so and I move on um, I'm waiting for the reload a little bit I was not sure if somebody was um, you know seeing that and charging me down um, I was just waiting for a second and then I moved on nothing here nothing here this is a really um, dangerous position because uh, if I don't have all the intelligence um, I might get surprised from the side so then I see that this T44 uh, made a double kill and I charge with him I then follow him because he can catch the shells uh, and I wanted to get this panther F as it turns out I was just a little bit too slow I didn't want to get into the crater tiger 2p uh, also behind the debris yeah which target to choose now we're flanking the flanking team again the panther F is visible is3 he doesn't focus on me I have all the time to aim and that's the driver's hatch for for, <laughs> for you um, i3 got a new model in the patch 1.59 I guess um, I have an old recording from 1.57 I guess so you can expect a tank review on the is3 if you guys like so the Tiger 2P misses I don't um, I was not sure if his shell disappeared in in the wood um, and then this T44 also didn't shoot somebody else I guess or it missed completely as I braked hard and then I uh, wanted to chase down that uh, tiger but an M26 E1 uh, got in my way one straight through the front plate there is nothing this guy can do he's just sentenced to die and uh, yeah second shell finishes off the rest of the crew and blowing up his Amorak or like so um, but this Tiger 2P is still there so I charge him um, no fears there he receives the shell and then one right through the loader and this guy had ammunition in the turret bad mistake 
Yeah, but it didn't blow up, but it was the crew which got killed. And then there is this pesky triple A. I hit him on the engine as he was about to retreat. And I was charging him. And triple A's are dangerous. Now my my big machine gun just doesn't have enough penetrating power um, to mm, go through the turret. Um, and he de detracts me while I am in mid-air, so to speak. And uh, I waited for the repair, then I go around, this other T-44 dunks the shell and I kill him with blowing up his fuel tank. And then this is the, the game here on this corner. I wait for it, there is a panther, one right through and you see how the shot trap worked, my ninth kill. A straight forward, forward, this is uh, action punched, this SU-100 Overduty, you see the bad, um, the problem with the bad um, gun firing arc. This Tiger too uh, dunked the shell somewhere, I'm not sure where, and uh, I was not fast enough with my reload to um, put one into his turret. I spread a little bit of artillery strikes around. You know, I'm not counting on them hitting, but you know, having them, you can waste them. And that was a really unlucky shot, and uh, I was not sure why he didn't take the shot there. He had me, and here you can see, there we go. That's the thing I'm talking about, wiggling your turret, turret from left to right while you're, uh, while you're angled. And I hit the track here, I guess that was from the artillery strike, and he got saved by his turret ring, which absorbed the shell uh, entirely. Now that was kind of surprising and um, I wait for him, uh, he goes up a slope, put one right through him and I'm not sure what I hit there for his ammunition to go off but you know, Russian shells, they find any kind of ammunition and blow it up and um, that's battle. Um, there's one Tiger E again and one shot again. So 12 kills. And this this battle didn't take long it was around eight minutes eight and a half minutes uh, so really good result there so let's have a quick look at the post battle results and we can see for 12 kills two assists and a lot of hits I got uh, 76,000 silver lines and 5,100 research points with a premium account no boosters applied uh, yeah, a lot of awards as well, and you could see that I one shot at nearly every tank that I um, faced, uh, doubling the score points of my of the second teammate and making uh, more kills than the entirety of the enemy team. We just steamrolled them, and also a big compliment to the rest of my team. They really did well. So that was also enough to fulfill the daily AT Warbond mission. Um, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give this uh, video a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And see you next time on the battlefield.